everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be like an answer video. Um, to a video asking for questions and I'll answer them. The questions, well the two questions that the person asked are quite like long to explain so I thought since there's only like that person's only commented I will just do a whole video about the questions. So the first question is um, after your precious someone's born sleeping, how did you find the strength to conceive again? So that's the first question. So basically I found this quite hard to answer because like I don't know, I didn't think I was very strong at the point um, of conceiving. I was still grieving and it was still really a hard time for me but I just thought like I had to find something to occupy my mind, I had to think about something, I had to try and look to the future. Just trying to hope that one day I'd get pregnant. So because both me and my boyfriend like felt ready, I don't necessarily say anyone's ready to get pregnant, but like we was ready to start trying again straight away and we started in December so we lost Riley in October 2014 and we started in December um, once I had my first period because um, it happened all very quickly. The question, I won't really say like I was, I had strength, um, it was just more the fact of I wanted a baby so bad I was ached and my heart ached waiting for my baby so I thought the only way I'm going to be able to help myself is get pregnant again. So that's what we did and I just wanted to say that like even though um, I tried straight away it didn't happen straight away um, getting pregnant with Lily that is because um, Lily took eight months to conceive which is a pretty long time especially when you're grieving and that's all you can think about is being a mom and you're missing your baby and you just want like you just want to be occupied, you want something to live for and I didn't think I had anything to live for like so I just wanted a reason um, even though obviously now I know that there's tons of things to live for but when you're in that moment you don't you don't think there's like anything to live for. But the main things I could say is just never give up if you're in the position I was in I just kept telling myself just never give up and just always have hope that you will get so loved and wanted baby one day. That's, that's kind of the thing that kept me going is just like I just had to think that hopefully one day I would have my beautiful healthy baby alive here with me and that kind of like kept me going all the time just kept thinking about that and as well obviously I had my partner who was very supportive and I was also seeing a counsellor and telling her about this trying to conceive so I did have a lot of support so I definitely recommend support is really good that really got me through it um, I also took folic acid straight away um, we did with Riley when we tried to conceive Riley and then the same with Lily they recommend you take folic acid if you're trying to conceive which I did both times because uh, both of my babies are planned. Never easy like trying to conceive. I don't want I don't want you to think that like it was easy for me, like it was really hard to try and conceive a month after month of getting negative tests and just wanting the positive but then you kinda of want the positive but then you don't because you kinda of know like oh well what if it's gonna happen again? Um so it is very scary, very scary, very nerve wracking but you just have to stick with it and then just as long as you've got support around you and you can do it and get through it. It's also like fine to cry, like I cried countless of times. Like I feel like a good cry makes you feel better, or well, me anyway. If you feel ready to like try again, then just go for it and don't put any pressure on yourself. Like just take it easy if you want to try for like two months and then have a month of a break just have some headspace then that's perfectly fine I feel like you should just do what you want to do don't do what anyone else tells you what to do because it's your body end of the day and it's your mind and yes I always think that you should do what you want to do so yes definitely recommend if you think me
also try not to think about getting pregnant as much which I know is a lot easier said than done because loads of people used to say to me don't think about it, try and relax more, don't put pressure on yourself and it is a lot um, easier for people just to say that than actually doing it um, and it was only when I think we wasn't trying as much that like obviously we're still trying but we kind of just like went with the flow we didn't kind of like pressure ourselves to um, get pregnant I think it was the last month um, and then with it coming up to like the eighth month of trying I just thought oh it's just never going to happen so we kind of like we didn't give up but we just kind of tried to focus on something else so that helped and then obviously the month came round. I think I was a week late and then took a pregnancy test and I was pregnant. You think it's really hard to ever get ready but I do feel like when you've had a loss and then you start trying again you just have to think is this what really why I want? Are you prepared the possibility of going through another loss? Which majority of the time I'd, I try to keep out my mind obviously it's always going to be there in your mind whether the pregnancy is going to end or you're going to get a baby so yes I hope that has answered that question properly sorry I rambled on but um, yes I just tried to get in like as much information to you as possible around the trying to conceive after a loss so hopefully that's helped and now on to question number two so just looking at my phone again to you, tell you the exact question, so the next one was how did you stop the fear of losing another child from getting pregnant? So I was thinking about this question and I was trying to think like how did I stop the fear then I thought like the fear never goes away, like fear is with you right up until your baby's in your arms, I just found that as the pregnancy was progressing further and further along it seemed easier like on my mental state like I, f I was just getting close to counting the weeks down and I felt like that was a lot easier than um, just constantly thinking something's going to go wrong which obviously never leaves your mind it really doesn't like it's never going to be the same when I get pregnant because of losing Riley I'm never going to be like so happy, carefree, not worrying, it's just never going to be like that every single pregnancy, I'm going to worry, I'm going to be scared, I'm going to be nervous and it's completely normal because you just, you know what's going to happen um, like well, what could happen because you've experienced it so yes I feel like the fear will never go but I found some things that helped so the first one was like regular checkups. I had a, obviously, as you can imagine, I had a lot of checkups um, right up. I think about five weeks when I found out I was pregnant, right up until 38 weeks and a couple of days. I think I got induced after that. Regular appointments and the amount of scans I had, they really like helped settle my nerves. Even though going into the scan room wasn't enjoyable at the star because um, we went in the exact same room we found out I lost Riley and that's where I kept having my regular um, scans in there and then obviously every time they put the scan the Doppler on I always have like flashbacks to when I was laying there and then found out Riley was no longer alive so it is hard but I feel like once they put that the Doppler and they find the heartbeat like it's just a relief and then I think it was every four weeks I would see her all the time and especially when she starts moving I feel like these are all the things that help and reassure you and like keep you calm so definitely regu regular appointments, regular scans and um, feeling baby move all the time like I just feel like they're all things that like kept me calm um, and yeah there was a big part of me not like losing my mind through my pregnancy it's just like a little tip i wanted to add in well a little statement type thing i don't know what you would call it but basically about the moving is um if you ever feel like your baby i don't know if you ever get a feeling that your baby's um not 
moving as much or you don't feel right in yourself or their like pattern has changed say your baby kicks every night and one night they haven't kicked try try all the fizzy drinks laying on your side and stuff like that but i want to say always ring your midwife if you ever have any concern over movements because the movements shouldn't really change and most of the time when there's if you're concerned over the movements, it could be that your baby's in distress or your baby's just sleeping or anything. So I just want to stress that please do not ever go to sleep worrying about your baby's movements. Ring your midwife or maternity ward up and get checked because yes, you could save your baby's life. So definitely always get checked on movements and stuff. The thing was, if you're able to do it, I was able to ask to be induced at 38 weeks, or just over 38 weeks with Lily, because they class 38 weeks, I think that's full term in the UK, um, 40 weeks they, they take you to, but 38 weeks the baby's completely fine to come, and most babies are born then. If you can, I would definitely recommend, if you've gone for a loss, to actually get induced at 38 weeks, because... I feel like the extra two weeks the placenta can start deteriorating and your high risk of um, stillbirth because the extra two weeks is just like so nerve wracking making you wait even longer when the baby's completely fine, healthy and ready to come out if there's no problems or anything. I definitely recommend asking because I spoke to my consultant and I was just like it was starting to get to the end so I was starting to get excited but then also nervous because I feel like I've got this far is something going to happen now and it's just all going to come crashing down um, so I just really really wanted to do in my arms I'm like she's fine she's at a good weight she's perfectly healthy she's at full term like what's the point in keeping her in there it's just going to stress me out even more so I just wanted her out and the relief when she comes out, oh my gosh, it's just amazing. You can't explain it. You just feel so happy and she's alive, she's breathing, she's crying. Oh my god, it's just magical. Like I can always remember her coming out. It's just amazing. So yeah, that is just great. So I definitely recommend if you can, obviously different countries might have different rules but yes hopefully your consultant understands that why keep them in there if they're perfectly healthy to come out so fingers crossed that will then um, be okay the other thing is because i don't know if you watched my um, stillbirth video but when riley had his post-mortem they never actually found out why he died um, he was perfectly healthy, he was normal, he had nothing wrong with him, his placenta looked all intact and they said it looked normal. Um, so um, when they did the postmortem there was nothing, they couldn't find anything with him. So they put it down to the placenta not like functioning right, as they say, which um, sometimes it can happen when there's, um, with the blood flow of the placenta. So the umbilical cord and the placenta is obviously your baby's lifeline while they're inside of you and um, the, they think I was I had thicker blood or I had clots which I don't think they actually found, I'm not too sure, they didn't tell me they found that. They say that because there's no reason um, most of the time like 90% of stillbirths are just down to the placenta not functioning. Obviously there are different cases that there's something wrong with the baby or um, your placenta came apart or anything like that but when like everything's intact and everything's normal they can't actually determine why or they, they haven't got the equipment to do that or what so they just basically put it down to that. So I had to be put on aspirin um, to thinen my blood throughout my pregnancy so I think it was around 11 weeks I had to go to the doctors, shown in the letter that my consultant gave me to recommend to put me on aspirin and I had to take that right up until Lily was born and obviously I don't know if if that was the reason why Lily like survived and Riley didn't because I was on the aspirin but all I know that is future pregnancies I will be going on the aspirin because I felt like 
I was on the ice cream with Lily and she came out fine and I wasn't with Riley and obviously he was born sleeping so obviously I don't want to risk anything happening. So if that's your reason um, why your baby died is the percent I definitely recommend the next pregnancy you talk to your doctor, consultant, midwife about aspirin because I feel like a lot of people are put on it when they've had like miscarriages or stillbirths and I don't know, I don't know if it, I feel like it saves babies lives um, and helps your baby come into the world so if there's anything to help then definitely do it but obviously always check with your doctor before taking any medicines. Even though I successfully had Lily I just wanted to let you know that like the pain still hurts as well like some people think when you have another child that the pain goes away or like you feel complete or whatever like that and basically you don't like I just wanted to say that even though um, I, even if I was to have like 10 kids which I wouldn't <laughs> there's a lot of kids so I don't think I could cope um, but yeah the pain will never go away your heart will always like hurt and be broken and you'll always have like down days of just missing your child obviously because your child's supposed to be with you and that's completely normal like at like now Lily's two and I still have like sad days like if um, I'm not busy or Lily's not keeping me busy and it's all quiet in the house then like I do start thinking about Riley and like I can just bawl in tears and especially his anniversaries and Christmas when he's supposed to be here so I just let you know that like it never having another child doesn't replace your child that you've lost it just mean like Lily just helps like it's just amazing to be a mummy to her because I've always wanted to be a mummy and she keeps me busy and she just just really helps with like I just love her so much like if it wasn't for her and conceiving her and having her I have no idea what my life would be right now or even if I would be here right now because yes it definitely impacts you especially when you're only young as well because because I was I think I was only 20 when I lost Riley which is pretty young I was only just out of my teens um, so yeah it was really hard um, especially when you wanted like we wanted him and loved him so much already before he was even born it was like even harder I think that when especially when you plan ages for a pregnancy Riley took over a year to conceive which is a long time um, especially such a young couple anyway it's really hard never give up on wanting another child I always think that like there's always hope out there and always keep your fingers crossed that one day you will have your perfect little family with us. I really hope that this has helped and if I haven't covered anything else just leave them in the comments below if you have any more questions but I did find them really hard to answer because like it was like over two years ago and I just find like I wanted to like try and give you the best advice possible from my experience obviously everyone has their own tips and advice but this is just my advice and I really hope it's helped anyone out there and I really hope you get your rainbow baby as they say one day and yes I don't forget to like and subscribe and apparently there's like a new thing where you've got to tick the bell or click the bell um, if you want to be notified for my videos so make sure you do that and thank you so much for watching bye